This bulletin proudly brought to you in association with Alex Campbell's menswear. Tonight on the South Today, passengers and the Regional Council are creating a buzz around the new B card. Long-standing Dunedin South MP Claire Curran has given an emotional valedictory speech in Parliament. And the Governor-General is in Queenstown singing the praises of the tourism industry. Kia ora, good evening, I'm Sophie Morris. Since launching a week ago, about 11,000 people have received a new bus card across Dunedin and Queenstown. The Otago Regional Council says more than 8,000 B cards have been given to drivers to hand out to patrons. Just like the name suggests, the Otago Regional Council's new B cards have created such a buzz, they're flying out the door. More than 11,000 bus users across Dunedin and Queenstown have now received the new card, which will start working at the end of the month. Oti Posi Bus Users Group spokesperson Alex King registers his B card while waiting to catch a bus to Mosgiel. Um, but yeah, we've just got our new card, uh, which the drivers are handing out cards to people, so, um, and I've just registered mine online, so yeah, it was, was easy enough, yeah. King regularly travels from his North Dunedin home to Mosgiel for work and says there is one major advantage the B's card has over the old go card. Yeah, the old card you couldn't top it up, this is the thing, you, could, you couldn't top it up uh, online, the new card you can top online which is what I'm looking forward to, um, yeah the old one you used to have to pay cash to the driver years that was the easiest way and you can still do that but um, the new one yeah top up online so I'm always on my laptop so yeah. Otago Regional Council's Julian Phillips in South Dunedin talking with members of the disability sector about the card and says the uptake from people in the sector is going well. For people at this event a number of people attending um, may have difficulty accessing the bus or learning new systems uh, quickly or getting used to things or maybe slightly more um, not quite as used to change so to actually give them the opportunity to try it live in the flesh is really really important and as you can see from the attendance it's been really successful I think. Like with many electronic transactions there can be an element of buyer beware and Alex King says the card may have a sting in its tail for people who forget to swipe as they leave the bus. Uh, one, thing I, one thing I do know is that if you don't tag off you may get charged a, a, bit, a bit extra. It used to be that you would just um, show, give the, the card to the driver and that was it when you, when you, and tell them where you're going but in the new system you don't even need to talk to the driver, you just um, hold it next to the machine on your way in and then you're supposed to tag off, hold it next to the machine on your way out and uh, I believe there's a fine if you don't. Travelling on buses is still free until September the 1st when the B card will go live and the free fares end. The ORC says go cards won't work from next month. In Dunedin, the South today. Emergency services in South Otago were kept busy this morning with two serious road incidents occurring within an hour of each other. The first was a crash involving three cars and a truck just north of Balclutha at about 10.40 a.m. Two people received minor injuries while the driver of the truck left the scene. Police were still looking for the driver this afternoon. About half an hour later, police were called to another crash, this time involving a stock truck crashing into a railway overbridge. The truck was stuck under the overbridge, closing both lanes and traffic management had been called in. There were no reports of injuries. Former Cabinet Minister Claire Curran farewelled Parliament today. She gave her valedictory speech to the House last night after 12 years representing the Dunedin South electorate. In a fiery, emotional and often funny valedictory speech, outgoing Dunedin South MP Claire Curran spoke of the toll politics has taken on herself and her family, but also of the pride in representing Dunedin South. To all the people of Dunedin South, now the Tyree electorate, my people, you will be in strong, capable, caring hands with Ingrid Leary should you elect her. I gave you my life for 12 years. <laughs> and now it's time to pass the baton. Nami Hinui. That's a wrap. Oh. <laughs> 
The four-term MP spoke of the extreme emotional toll of politics, telling Parliament she once contemplated suicide. And yes, there was a moment when I counted the number of sleeping pills I had. Thankfully, I sought help instead. Also leaving Parliament is Dunedin-based and longest-serving Green Party MP Gareth Hughes, who will become a caretaker of Kamo Todua, Quarantine Island, with his family. I believe if we truly became a Titariti or Waitangi respecting nation, we could escape the fatal embrace of short-term, individualistic, environmentally damaging thinking that has dominated our politics. I'm optimistic about our future. I believe we can restore our environment, heal our society, and grow richer Aotearoa. Kia ora koutou. Curran highlighted two major issues in her electorate during her time as MP climate change and the future of the hillside workshops. In Dunedin, the South Today. An electronic tablet may have been the cause of a fire which destroyed the Mossburn Diner, a fire investigator says. More than 30 firefighters fought the biggest fire in the township for more than 10 years on Friday night. Fire investigator Mark Breddenbeck says while it's not confirmed, there is a possibility the fire was instigated by a malfunction of a lithium-ion battery with a tablet. Mossburn Chief Fire Officer Lance Hallowell says four volunteer fire brigades fought the blaze, which was well underway when firefighters arrived. The cause is undetermined. Domestic tourism is proving stronger than many businesses thought, the Governor-General said on a visit to Queenstown. Dame Patsy Reddy yesterday met Queenstown Resort College Adventure Tourism students at Wind Tunnel Experience Company iFly. One Queenstown tourism operator was given a shot in the arm yesterday with New Zealand's head of state taking a tour of the company. New Zealand's Governor General Dame Patsy Reddy was in Queenstown meeting students from Queenstown Resort College's Event Tourism School at the iSky Indoor Skydiving Company. The Governor General says she was heartened to see domestic tourism proving much stronger than many businesses thought. Firstly, it's a really tough time and I think we all, everyone in New Zealand understands that. But I've also seen and heard that they, perhaps the market here had not really appreciated uh, just the depth of domestic tourism and that domestic tourism has become a, obviously a very important part of what's happening in Queenstown, but also much stronger than some of the, uh, the businesses thought. She says it seems the situation will be the new reality for Queenstown. First time I've seen this business, it sounds very exciting. It's a new, relatively new start-up business for um, Queenstown, adventure tourism. Of course, it's the adventure tourism destination or capital, isn't it, of New Zealand. And I gather that, um, you know, they've got a really positive pivot that they've done for uh, attracting domestic tourists. So really interesting to catch up with, see exactly what they do. iFly General Manager Matt Wong says it was an honour to show the Governor General around his business and still can't quite believe it happened. An absolute honour. Um, I don't know how we managed to get the Governor General to visit us in the first place, but um, this is a once in a lifetime opportunity for us in the business. Uh, and it means a huge amount as, as far as support, knowing that the Governor General is thinking about us during our COVID crisis and our recovery. Wong says he was able to explain to Dame Patsy how his business was coping and what he was doing to battle his way through after the flow of international tourists was turned off. We were 80% international customers and we had to think very quickly how we were going to pivot to the domestic audience. We looked at the pricing structure, the products that we were going to offer to Kiwis and we need to make sure that it hit the right chord with, with those families especially. Uh, the Governor-General, who also met with Queenstown Lakes Mayor Jim Bolt, was treated to a skydiving display by iFly instructors. In Queenstown, the South Today. Still to come on the South Today, we hear about the impact of COVID-19 on Dunedin retailers and we take a look at the cannabis referendum as part of a new Channel 39 political series.
If you're at risk of developing melanoma skin cancer, you owe it to yourself to have a mole map. Mole map is coming to your area. Phone today to make an appointment. It could save your life. A poorly maintained heat pump can lose up to 35% of its output. The Mr. Heat Pump Cleaner team are experts. Their specially developed chemical wash is totally biodegradable. Call Mr. Heat Pump Cleaner and get the job done by the professionals. Wrens are Otago's painting, tiling and plastering experts. Offering a free measure and quote, Wrens is a name you can trust to get the job done right. Call Wrens today on 477-9384 or visit wrens.co.nz. Do you know Youth Grow in North East Valley? It's an awesome plant nursery where young people can work and learn life skills. You can now order your vegetable seedlings, herbs, bulbs and shrubs over the phone or by email. Either pick up your order on Norwood Street in North East Valley or they can deliver to you. Look for Youth Grow Garden Centre on Facebook or visit youthgrow.org.nz. Happy gardening! Heaven Sent Pet Cremations knows that losing a pet is like losing a family member. And we have many special ways for you to keep their memory dear to your heart. From caskets, remembrance pendants to remembrance spheres. Call Heaven Sent Pet Cremations today. Every reason, every season, we're proud to dress the region. Alex Campbell Menswear, it fits. You've seen us in the street, now find us online. Check out shopon.org.nz. We have all sorts of treasures, from retro and vintage clothing to antiques, homewares and accessories. New items added every week. We're open 24-7. Garador Dunedin, delivering quality, stylish garage doors in Dunedin for over 17 years. New doors, replacement doors and maintenance are all part of Garador's quality service. Garador Dunedin offers a full range of modern quality doors to suit any home. Come visit the team. Welcome back. Dunedin's main shopping street is yet to really feel the pinch of COVID-19's economic disruption following a recent audit of vacated premises. Commercial property valuer Adam Benz counts the number of empty shops along George Street every three months. After his latest survey at the start of August, he believes retailers are adopting a wait-and-see approach. He counts retail premises on Edinburgh Way, the Golden Block and the Farmers Block. Bin says many people are still receiving wage subsidies and when they end, there may be more changes to the face of retail in Dunedin CBD. New Zealand is set to go to the polls next month. As well as choosing the next government, voters will have two referenda to vote on. One of those decisions is on the control and use of cannabis. This is the first in a series of stories looking at the issue, starting with researcher Jeff Noller. When New Zealanders vote in this year's general election, it'll be the first time the country has seriously considered its cannabis laws in almost 50 years. Uh, they've looked at the pros and cons of the potentials that might come out of a referendum should, ref should cannabis be legalised in New Zealand. Uh, they've offered uh, commentary on the harms and they've also tried to place those harms in a, con in a broader context and I think they've done a very good job uh, generally. Otago Medical School researcher Jeff Noller says the nation has a long history of classifying cannabis as a controlled and or dangerous substance and he says voters have a rare chance to influence lawmakers. If we think about the first cannabis laws we had in this country, that was 1926 with the Dangerous Drugs Act. Uh, then uh, 50 years later you have the Misuse of Drugs Act, 1975. Now we're in 2020, so we're looking at almost 50 year increments. So really it is a once in a lifetime opportunity for people to uh, think about the uh, current uh, regulations and legislation and laws that we have about cannabis and to make a decision as to whether or not we, they think uh, that this is uh, currently is, is the status quo something that we want to continue with or do we want to take a different approach. He says where it's been roughly 50 years since the laws were tweaked, it's good the public is being offered the chance to have its say. However, he's concerned some of the language being used might not make sense to many people. But my concern would be that maybe 
and quite a proportion of the public might maybe struggle a bit with some of the language in terms of how things are explained because they get into some quite complicated ideas and that's something that I really think would need to be focused more on is you've got a good body of information there now you need to get it out to people generally so that people can have an opportunity to think about this really important issue and then they can make a decision when it comes to the referendum. Dollar has extensively studied drug culture and policy throughout his career and says Dunedin's 50-year longitudinal study is providing valuable information about the way society sees drug use. We're in a very good position in terms of being informed to make decisions. It is now an opportunity for us to actually start having a broader discussion about that, a more detailed discussion, one that's informed by evidence, and then coming to, to decisions in September. Nola says there is balanced information about the choices facing the nation at www.referendums.govt.nz and he's encouraging voters to educate themselves about the choices they can make in September. In Dunedin, the South Today. After the break on the South Today, young cross-country champions go head-to-head -head -head in Ashburton and we check out tomorrow's weather. Garador Dunedin, delivering quality, stylish garage doors in Dunedin for over 17 years. New doors, replacement doors and maintenance are all part of Garador's quality service. Garador Dunedin offers a full range of modern quality doors to suit any home. Come visit the team. Do you know Youth Grow in North East Valley? It's an awesome plant nursery where young people can work and learn life skills. You can now order your vegetable seedlings, herbs, bulbs and shrubs over the phone or by email. Either pick up your order on Norwood Street in North East Valley, or they can deliver to you. Look for Youth Grow Garden Centre on Facebook or visit youthgrow.org.nz. Happy gardening! Come on, mate. The blue doesn't go with the brown. Wrens are Otago's painting, tiling and plastering experts. Offering a free measure and quote, Wrens is a name you can trust to get the job done right. Call Wrens today on 477-9384 or visit wrens.co.nz. A poorly maintained heat pump can lose up to 35% of its output. The Mr. Heat Pump Cleaner team are experts. Their specially developed chemical wash is totally biodegradable. Call Mr. Heat Pump Cleaner and get the job done by the professionals. If you're at risk of developing melanoma skin cancer, you owe it to yourself to have a mole map. Mole map is coming to your area. Phone today to make an appointment. It could save your life. Step into Shop on Carroll and discover a shop full of treasures. We have a fantastic range of vintage and retro clothes, upmarket clothing labels, collectible items, beautiful jewellery, quality linen and the best range of vintage haberdashery. Heaven Sent Pet Cremations knows that losing a pet is like losing a family member. And we have many special ways for you to keep their memory dear to your heart. From caskets, remembrance pendants, to remembrance spheres. Call Heaven Sent Pet Cremations today. Ah, TV. Our favourite babysitter. But it can be tough keeping up with what our tamariki are watching. Uh, luckily, the Broadcasting Standards Authority has made some smart changes to the classification labels. Ooh! Plus changes to the time of day certain rated shows will air and awesome new parental lock features, meaning your babysitter's job is safe. Find out more at safeviewing.co.nz Inside are all sorts of innovations from all over China. Welcome back. 
Aspiring primary and intermediate age cross country champions got to compete in the annual cross country in Ashburton last week. The event saw the fastest runners from about 22 schools competing for the coveted chance to go on to further events in Christchurch. Hundreds of primary and intermediate level school pupils gave it their all in the cross country at the Ashburton A&P showgrounds last week. The annual event is coordinated by Natalie Shaw of the Mid Canterbury Primary Schools Sports Association. And so year 5 to year 8, the year 5 and 6 is they run a 2 kilometre race and the year 7 and 8 they run 3 kilometres and so each lap is 1k. Running in overcast conditions on a wet grass course, supported by friends, family and their school peers, the race lineup was made up of the winners from school heats from about 22 schools in the Mid Canterbury area. All the schools from Mid Canterbury area have had their school events and their winners have come down and they're going to compete today. We're going to have about two or three hundred kids. It's really exciting. The event is taken seriously by the youngsters as the top three from each age group will get to compete at a primary championship in Christchurch later this month. Very competitive. This is the best of the best. Some of the times could probably be under 15 minutes. So very exciting, some fast runners out there. And place getters from Ashburton's Intermediate School will get a chance to run in the Canterbury Intermediate Championship. In Ashburton, the South Today. And now recapping tonight's top stories on the South Today. Passengers in the Regional Council are creating a buzz around the new B card with thousands handed out already. Long-standing Dunedin South MP Claire Curran has given an emotional valedictory speech in Parliament. And Governor-General Dame Patsy Rennie has been in Queenstown singing the praises of the tourism sector. And time now for a look at what's happening in tomorrow's ODT. Welcome, Barry. Hello, Sophie. Good evening. The uh, government is warning us that we must be vigilant, so is the South ready for the next wave of COVID-19? Uh, Southern District Health Boys sa Board says not quite. Uh, so full story, full report on that in the ODT tomorrow. Right. Uh, fuel war erupts in Dunedin. Uh, Waitomo has moved in, so that's uh, sparked a, a bit of a, a fuel war. Uh, DCC says it cannot uh, release details of how many people have applied for the uh, position of Chief Executive. Um, underground parking at the New Dunedin Hospital is looking less likely uh, right. and off-site off parking may be needed. So uh, again, uh, another report on that in the paper tomorrow. Uh, a man who used a lime scooter for his mobile drug dealing business has been jailed. Okay, interesting. That and lots more. Right, thank you, Barry. Thank you. And time now for a look at tomorrow's weather. Tonight's weather proudly brought to you by Mole Map. Starting with the city view, Dunedin's George Street on a calm Wednesday afternoon. Looking at the situation, Another day of northerly airflow for the region tomorrow, but colder southwesterlies are on the way from Friday, with showers expected for the weekend. Starting off at the northwest of the South Island, Greymouth and Westport can expect rain and clouds, 15 degrees for Greymouth and 14 for Westport. Across to the northeast, Nelson and Blenheim can expect cloud and scattered showers, a high of 13 for Nelson and 16 for Blenheim. In Canterbury, it will be cloudy across the area. Kaikoura should reach 15 degrees, Christchurch 14 and Ashburton 16. To the southern towns, Plan for moderate northeasterlies. The Catlins and Balclutha can expect 12 degrees and clouds, while Lumsden and Gore can expect showers and 13 degrees. In Central, all centres can expect moderate northerlies. Wanaka, Queenstown, and Alexandra should reach 13 degrees with high clouds, 
while Tiano should reach 12 degrees with rain. To the northern towns, on the coast, Timaru and Oamaru can expect northeasterlies and cloud with 14 degrees, similar in Twizel and Omarama with 14 degrees and high clouds. In Dunedin, cloudy tonight with northeasterlies and an overnight low of 7, overcast tomorrow with fresh, breezy, cool northeasterlies, some light rain developing during the evening. A high of 12 and a low of 7. Overcast tomorrow with fresh, breezy, cool northeasterlies. Some light rain developing during the evening. A high of 10 and a low of 8. And in Invercargill, cloudy tonight with a low of 8. Cloudy on Thursday with moderate northerlies and scattered rain developing from late afternoon. A high of 12 and a low of 8. Showers on Friday with fresh cold southwesterlies, a high of 10 and a low of 7. That's all for our news this Wednesday. For the latest news from the southern region, head online to odt.co.nz or follow Channel 39 on Facebook and YouTube. Thanks for joining us. Ka kite anō. This bulletin proudly brought to you in association with Alex Campbell's menswear. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.